Hi, I am Serge. I want to make several videos about Kubernetes and start by creating a cluster for future experiments. I'll do it with Kubeadm. So, let's get started. Before installing your virtual machines, read the requirements in the paragraph named before you begin. Here you can see minimal resources for virtual machines and so on. I have already created three virtual machines, one master and two workers. Besides, I haven't disabled the swap yet, so let's do it. First of all, we need to connect to our virtual machines and just copy and paste the command to disable the swap. Do it on each virtual machine. OK, I've done it. The next step is the installation of a container runtime. First, we need to open this page and execute commands in this section. Let's do it. Just copy and paste them on each virtual machine. I have done it on the first virtual machine. Do it on the others. Everything is done. Let's go ahead. Then we need to install a container runtime. Here they are. I chose container D as my container runtime. Let's go to the page with instructions to install container D. The operating system of my virtual machines is Ubuntu. So let's open the instructions for this operating system. The installation of container D is similar to the installation of Docker. The main difference is the number of necessary packages that will be installed. You just need to install container D and nothing else. Let's start the installation. Just copy and paste commands into your terminal again. Of course, install container D on every virtual machine. I have installed container D everywhere. Let's continue. After the installation of container D, we need to configure the cgroup driver. I want to point out these statements. It's critical that the kubelet and the container runtime use the same cgroup driver and are configured the same. The second one is kubeadm starting after version 1.22 has systemd as the default cgroup driver. So we just need to set the cgroup driver in the configuration of container D. I prepared the command. You can see it on the screen. I'll set the default config with two changed options systemc group and sandbox underscore image. After execution, restart the container D service and check its status. Do the same on the other virtual machines. Afterward, go back to the page installing kubeadm. Our next step is installing kubeadm, kubelet and kubectl. Here are the commands to do it. You don't have to do the fifth step. Repeat steps from 1 to 4 on other hosts. 
OK, Cubedom, Cubelet and Cubectl have been installed. Let's continue. We are ready to initialize the control plane node. Let's go to the section with instructions. Here they are. To initialize the control plane node, run this command cubedm init with arguments. I have prepared the command with two arguments pod network CIDR and API server advertise address. Of course, execute it as a super user. Wait a few minutes while your control plane node is initializing. The installation is completed. The next instructions are on the screen. To start using your cluster, you need to run the following as a regular user. Let's do it and check our node. The internal IP of my control plane node is 10.0.2.15, but here it is the IP 192.168.1.50. Why is it so? I used Vagrant to prepare my virtual machines. My virtual machines have two network interfaces. One interface is used for connecting to the Internet and another interface is used for connecting the virtual machines via an internal network. It was chosen wrong internal IP, so I need to change it. The correct internal IP is 192.168.1.50. To change the internal IP, I need to add in kubelet cubedm arguments one more value, node IP and restart kubelet. Check the internal IP again. Now it's correct. After the installation of our control plane node, let's configure our workers. To do it, you just need to copy this command and paste it on your workers. Of course, we need to change the internal IP addresses of workers too. Let's do it. The IP address of worker 1 ends with number 51 and the IP of worker 2 ends with number 52. Everything works fine. Lastly, we need to install CNI, Container Network Interface. In this video, I am going to install Flannel. Let's do it. Firstly, go to their GitHub page. To install Flannel, apply this Kubernetes manifest. If you use a custom pod CIDR, you need to download this manifest and change some values. Let's do it. I've downloaded the manifest. Firstly, change the pod CIDR value if it's necessary. And secondly, if you use Vagrant 2, you need to add the argument I faced to the Flannel command. To find the name of your internal network interface, you can use the command IP address show. Here it is. The name of our interface is the same on other virtual machines. I am ready to install Flannel. Copy this manifest to your master host. I am using the command scp. Of course, you can just copy and paste the content of the file. Apply it and check the creation of pods. All of the pods are running. Our cluster is ready. In the end, I want to apply a manifest to check the working of our cluster. It's a simple manifest with a deployment and service. Let's apply it. Containers are creating. Wait some time. Some of our containers are running. Use the command kubectl put forward to look at the main page of the Nginx web server created by the deployment. I'll connect to my master host from another tab.
using curl get the content of the main page. Here you can see welcome to Nginx so everything functions correctly. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful to you. See you in the next video. Bye.